Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. I have a question for you. How cool are you? Well, if you are subscribed to this channel, you're pretty cool. And you're subscribed. Right? But are you so cool that in the 80s and 90s, every single television studio, Hollywood studio, wanted you in their movie? And you were appeared in several blockbusters like Terminator 2, Jurassic Park, just to name a couple. But then, you were too cool for the government. And the government decided that, well, I'm sorry, but you have to be banned now. If you answered yes to those questions, then well, my friend, you are a Spaz-12. Today's featured firearm. Now, if you're a fan of, well, anything from the 90s or any video, really any first-person shooter made in the past 20 years, you've probably seen the Spaz-12. And it has appeared in, I think, like every single major shooter. I think every Call of Duty since the first Modern Warfare. And man, it, this gun is everywhere. And that would lead you to believe that this gun is, well, readily available. It's, it's not. It was banned for being too cool, boys and girls. And this version I'm holding right here is one of the rarer versions because of that. Now, the Spaz-12 was first produced by an Italian company called Franchi out of, well, Italy. Now, they wanted to design a shotgun that was a rugged military shotgun that could also be used by police forces. Hence, it's very convoluted operating system. And for, shoot, I think just about every single video game out there, there's a slightly different way that that video game tackles how the Spaz-12 functions. It's both pump action and semi-automatic. It's also quite heavy because of that. One of its most notable features that you've probably seen in, well, especially Jurassic Park, is the collapsible stock. The way this works is that you push in this little indent back here, fold the stock back, and there's another indent back here that you push down bring the butt plate around. I just replaced some of the parts in this so that's why it's a little stiff but now you have a butt stock that's really kind of awkward because the front of the gun is very heavy and then the back of the gun is really really light so that's kind of weird. But anyway what happened with this thing? Well as most gun companies do they want to make sure their uh, rifle, shotgun, pistol, whatever you have is available to be sold in the United States because well we like firearms here. And this is a very cool firearm that at the time was featured in many a movie, TV show, etc. However, the US government decided that this gun was too cool. It looks mean, it looks aggressive, but at the end of the day, it's, it's just a 12 gauge shotgun. And because of how cool it looked and how aggressive it looked, it was banned in the 1994 assault weapons ban from importation. Now, that meant that any assault-style weapon was banned from being imported into the United States. So while it was banned, you could still have um, ARs and such that were still manufactured during that time here, but they were featureless, quote-unquote. You could have things like a flash hider, you could have 30-round magazines, um, a bunch of really silly cosmetic stuff that in no way changes the way that the firearm works. But because of the Spaz-12 being an Italian-made gun, it was banned outright, and that kind of that kind of killed it because it's not the best shotgun ever for military or law enforcement purposes, and we'll get to demonstrating some of that right here, right now. All right, so loading the Spaz-12 is a little awkward in and of itself. Now, first off, you have to decide what mode you would like to fire your Spaz-12 in. To fire it in semi-automatic, there's a button down here on the pump. You push that, and if you look on the top on the heat shield, there's two lines right here. A is for automatic, M is for manual. So we're already in automatic, so if we would want to fire in manual, we'd push this button in, and now we're in pump. Why? We'll get to that in a second, but let's try automatic. So once that's done, depress this button on the left side, open up the breech, throw a shell in there, close it. Then you take, this is kind of awkward to do, the other shells, you still have to depress this button 
on the side right here. And that will open up the loading gate. Let's see, I think I got one more. See, it's closed if you don't push that button. Press that button with your palm of your hand or with your thumb. There you go. All right, so this for the record is the first time I fired this thing. Uh, we're gonna see how well it does and we'll, uh, we'll go from there. All right, here we go. Oh, turn the safety off. Ah. Haha. So we had a stovepipe first off, and now we got a shell that doesn't want to come back. All right, so I got it back in the tube, so let's see if I can. Okay. All right. So yeah, believe it or not, that's about how well a SMAS-12 runs. Um, they weren't re very reliable. That was full power buckshot. I got some slugs that we'll try. Um, we'll also try that again with some more buckshot, but um, yeah, unfortunately that's about par for the course. And this, this one, I did clean. I cleaned it fully. It's exceptionally clean. She's squeaky clean. And she even has a new buffer uh, in there as well. That might be some of the issues with it, but let's run some more there and see how it goes. All right, so we're gonna try that again. I got five more rounds of full power buckshot in here. Uh, hopefully this time will be a little bit better. Ah, almost. So same thing again. So don't eat my pinky. What is happening? It's like the, uh, doesn't want to get lifted up into the, into the, uh, yeah, but the lifter's not wanting to do its thing. Whatever that's technically called. She got me. Okay. We got through what, four? All right, I'm gonna go tend to my, my wounds here. Worry about grand thumb, worry about spaz finger, all right? And then we'll uh, reassess. All right, so now that myself and this spaz 12 has bonded over my blood, uh, I've got some slugs in, we got five rounds of slugs. Maybe that'll help it run better. I don't know, but let's find out. The answer to that question is no, but hold up, it's just a... Okay. Okay. I think that was the last one. Nope. But then it doesn't want to eject it either. All right, so I didn't bleed that time. Uh, what it might be is that these aren't full power slugs. These are the only slugs I could get um, locally and in time for this video. You see the brass there is not quite as high as, uh, let me grab one of those, one of those uh, buckshot shells. So if you take a gander here, Obviously this has been shot, so it looks like this is still two and three quarters inch, which is what the SPAS-12 is supposed to use. You can see that the brass there isn't uh, quite as built up. So these are typically called low or mid brass. This is full brass. And I thought that might be a bit of a problem. I think that's what just happened there. It didn't have enough uh, oomph to work the action. And then it got, uh, you know, all discombobulated because of that. But it should be good. And um, I, knew, I had a feeling that was probably going to happen eventually. But uh, most places are making bird shot and varmint shot right now because that's the hunting season. And most of the buck shot and slugs that I can find right now are, um, are self-defense rounds, which cost like almost five bucks a shot in some cases. So we're going with the buck shot that I could find, uh, which is, I think, the thing that it's working the best with so far. But even this isn't exactly what it's supposed to use. It's supposed to use full power military rounds. I just couldn't find any of that uh, in time for the video. But we might source some of that later on and come back and uh, take a look at it after. Or it could just be 
a SPAS-12. Now, the, one of the reasons why the SPAS-12 is semi-automatic and pump is so you could use less than lethal rounds like Dragon's Breath. That was pretty cool. All right, we're gonna make sure everything's on fire back there real quick, which it shouldn't be because it's been raining for the past week, solid. All right, so now we're gonna put to test something that you hear a lot of politicians saying that 5.56 out of an AR-15 is far too deadly for home defense. It's this thing that's gonna, you know, kill you, your soul and your ancestors' souls because it's so powerful. So down there, we've got a watermelon for an exhibition of the power of 5.56. Then we'll try it against uh, 12 gauge and see uh, what's the more splattering round. Well, that was a fair amount of splatter. Let's go check it out. So it looks like I caught him on the edge and uh, there's about half a watermelon left. So you would not be a, a happy camper if uh, you're breaking into somebody's house and that hits you, that's for sure. All right, now let's, uh, let's see what 12 gauge does. We'll do slugs and buckshot. All right, and now a one ounce slug out of the Spaz 12. Let's see how this goes. There's a lot more splatterage. So that's uh, <laughs> uh, that's about a third of watermelon left. Um, I think I hit that one off to the right too. I'm just aiming off to the right today. All right, now we're gonna try buckshot, which is uh, what a lot of people recommend for home defense. And we'll see how much of that watermelon's left after this one. Ooh, hey, it ejected that time. So we're, uh, we're going places now. Okay, so I was like, oh man, it's kind of intact. I was expecting uh, Buckshot to do a lot more, but then, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's a little more than five, five, six. <laughs> Blew more than half of it off. Dang. Watermelon smells good though. It's making me crave some of it. The, uh, the ants are gonna eat well tonight. I can tell you that much. All right, I've got it in pump action now. We'll see if she runs better in this mode, which I would think she would. So let's uh, let's find out, shall we? Uh, five rounds of buckshot. Same thing. The lifter doesn't want to lift. At least I know that you know it's in pump action, so I won't chomp my own finger off. All right. So yeah, well, not a very good semi-automatic shotgun. It's not the world's best pump action shotgun ever. And not to mention this thing cost uh, about $2,500 in 2000 and, well, 2004. So you're paying for a very expensive gun that may or may not work most of the time. All right, now we're gonna do our patented soda penetration test, see how far a uh, slug out of the Spaz 12 will go through these sodas. Um, I think it's gonna absolutely obliterate the first two, and then it's either gonna dump all its energy in the second one, and then veer off somewhere else, or it might smoke all of them. So let's, uh, let's find out. Oh, I think that bout got all of them. Uh, I was a little off to the right. I absolutely just glanced the stock to thunder. That's what happened there. Then he kept going through this Sam's Cola. Went through the root beer here. Oh, actually, yeah, look at that. It cracked that one open. 
uh, Mountain Lightning got a little bit of a scratch here. And then I think this guy actually was fine. Yeah, he is. All right. I'll line up some more and we'll see if we can get a more uh, center shot And this time. All right, we're gonna try that again. One more one ounce slug. We are in pump. So gun shouldn't get messed up afterwards, but we'll see about that. I'm gonna do my best to hit it dead center now. Oh, by the way, our second camera overheated. That's how hot it is out here. If you can't hear the bugs singing their song, it's like 98 right now, so it is warm. So yeah. All right, let's see if I can nail it mid this time. Okay. That did something. And that worked. Great. Oh, it, oh, look at that. I could not do that again if I tried. All right, so that sight's a little high because I aimed right at the R after Dr. Thunder. And that slug sailed through. <laughs> I, rem I simply removed the cap. And then it got the twist up back there and it added into the Dr. Thunder right here, exited there, blew the, what was the Sam's, Sam's Cola Zero absolutely apart and then took the cap off of the Sam's Cola. I could not do that. You could not pay me to do that again. Wow. I didn't mean to be that precise. That explains a lot with the watermelons too. I was hitting high. That's why the, uh, the, the upper halves of the watermelons were getting Obliterated. Well, I wasn't aiming high. The sights were high, which you can you can adjust. I think the rear sight or the front sight on the Spaz 12, or maybe it just shoots high. Look, here's one of the caps. Look at that. It's still got a bit of the plastic in it. That's great. Cool. Physics are fun. Boop. So like I said, the Spaz 12 was banned from importation because it looked scary, how the features of the assault weapon banned that it didn't like, but it worked, as we've seen here, not that great, but essentially it's the same as this gun right here. This is a Remington 1100. This is a semi-auto shotgun, one of the most popular shotguns in the 70s, 80s, and 90s for hunting. I don't think they make them anymore. I think they uh, go on with the Versamax line now, but this is a uh, full auto, a full semi-automatic shotgun. It doesn't have a pump action or anything like that. But um, as you see, it works a bit better than the Spaz, hopefully. And it actually works. So yeah, Spaz 12 banned because it looks scary, but this gun, I'm pretty sure wasn't banned. Doesn't have any of the scary uh, black polymer or metal furniture, wood stock. Um, does have a five round internal magazine, uh, rather than the eight round magazine that the Spaz 12 came with, but again, shot the same shells. And as we saw, works a lot better than the Spaz 12 does. So yeah, that just be how the government works at times. All right. Buckshot versus one gallon of water. Also, uh, will it finally cycle all the way? Let's find out. That doesn't count. We almost did it, boys. We almost got it. Just in case the twist up thought I was sorry. All right, that was almost five out of five. That was like three out of five that actually worked. Cool. All right, so the Spaz 12, it's a neat shotgun, famous shotgun. It's a Hollywood TV show shotgun, but I mean, in all actuality, it's not that great. Uh, these guns are old. I mean, this one was uh, made in, I think, 1987 is the key code on it. And like, you know, it's cool and all, and I could probably get it to work better. Um, I'm sure if I could find some actual military grade ammunition, it will probably run much better. And the truth is these things are eventually, they're, they're gonna break. There's only so many times you can fire a shotgun shell out of a shotgun and something not get worn down or snap, crack, whatever. The thing is about the Spaz 12 is that parts aren't available. You can get a couple of things like this right here. This is the uh, buffer for the folding stock. This absorbs the impact of the round because if that's not here, then this bit of metal is going to collide with this bit of metal and well, huh, 
that's not good. I can get things like that. There's a internal buffer right around here that the original ones from the 80s, it's you know 1980s plastic, it's just not gonna live that long. But thankfully the previous owner of this gun did swap that out. And that was that uh, image I posted up on the community tab a little while ago. So yeah, it's a cool gun, doesn't really work that well. If you're a collector, yeah, sure. It's got its collector value to it. It's double the price of what it was back in 2000. So you can find these for about $5,000 online for a shotgun that's very picky on ammo. Like you've seen here today, if you don't get the right ammo, it's not really gonna run that well. But again, a very cool, very neat looking gun, especially if you're a fan of the movie. So guys, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this type of video, let me know in the comments down below. Share with your friends, because these videos don't really do that well with the uh, YouTube algorithm and all that. With that being said, catch you guys in the next one. I'm gonna go take a shower now because it's hot as hell out here. Well, you weren't made anymore. And if the answer to that, oh, that's a bug. Shoo. Or I'm gonna miss like a chump. I'll edit that out.